Before file sharing, before music streaming, we had the Columbia House Music Club. It was a quick and easy way to build a music collection. But whatever happened to the company and were their record pressings really that bad? That's what we're talking about today. Be right back. Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. So who remembers these ads? These literally appeared in every single music magazine back in the day. Yes, these ads for Columbia House were all over the place when I was growing up in the 80s. The ads promised you a bunch of records, tapes, or CDs for a penny. I joined Columbia House in 1989 when I was 16. That's how I started my CD collection. It seems at one point in time, all my friends were members of Columbia House, which I think makes this topic that much more interesting. Columbia House was huge, at least here in North America, and then they seemingly disappeared overnight. So what happened? Let's unravel the mysteries of Columbia House. Channel 33 RPM. The roots of Columbia House can be traced back to the 1950s when the Columbia record label started a mail service for records. As technology changed, so did Columbia House's offerings. Over the years, including reel-to-reel -reel tapes, 8-tracks, cassettes, CDs, and movies. During its heyday in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, Columbia House members got a stack of albums for a penny. Then they had to buy a few more at the regular price, plus shipping to fulfill their membership agreement. Regular price was often greater than retail, but there were special offers along the way to sweeten the pie. Over time, these record clubs became a powerhouse. By 1994, Columbia House and its rival, BMG, which was formerly known as the RCA Music Service, sold 15%, 1-5% of all CDs in the U.S. Now, if we're honest, part of the appeal of joining Columbia House was gaming the system. If you didn't do it, I'm sure you know someone who did. Here's how it worked. You would sign up using a fake name. You'd get your eight CDs or your 10 albums for a penny. Then you would disappear, only to sign up again down the road using another fake alias. Columbia House, for their part, also engaged in some questionable practices. Members would regularly receive a catalog of albums for sale, which also included the selection of the month. If you didn't want the selection of the month, you had 10 days to send back a postcard saying, ah, no thanks. But if you didn't send it in in time, or if you forgot, you would be shipped that record and billed for it. That practice is called negative option billing and has been banned in some U.S. states and in many Canadian provinces. Columbia House was also really good at marketing themselves to the correct demographics. I was going through all my old heavy metal magazines from the 80s and 90s. And, you know, here's one of the Columbia House ads. This one specifically was uh, geared towards people into hard rock and metal with the heading on this ad being Metal Meltdown. And of course, if they were in like um, a teen magazine or a magazine more focused on young girls, they would have ads geared towards that demographic and obviously that technique really worked for them. So you may be asking what happened to Columbia House? What went wrong? Simply put consumer habits changed. People started downloading music and Columbia House took a big hit. Following a failed merger with CD Now, longtime competitor BMG purchased Columbia House in 2005. In 2008 the company was acquired by a private investment group. The brand is still around today but but it has little in common with the Columbia House of yesterday. If you go to ColumbiaHouse.com, you will find a website that sells DVDs. Today, it's still quite common to find records, CDs, and tapes out in the wild manufactured by Columbia House. One way to identify Columbia House records is by looking at the back of the album jacket. I have a handful 
still of these Columbia House records and of course CDs, but I pulled a couple off my shelf. Here's one. Here is the debut album by Judas Priest. And, you know, from first glance, it looks like any other version of this album. The cover is not any thicker or not any thinner than other ones. And the images and pictures are all on the back, but if you look at the fine print right there in the corner, it says manufactured by Columbia House, a division of CBS Records of Canada. So in this case, this was a Canadian Columbia House release. Here's another one. This is Time Pieces, the best of Eric Clapton. Again, if you saw this sitting on his shelf, at first glance, it looks like any other version of this particular record. And again, the back is similar and uh, the record label is similar. However, if you look right here, it says manufactured by Columbia House. Again, a division of CBS Records of Canada. Here's that Eric Clapton record. Again, as I mentioned, look at the label. It looks like any other label. Columbia House is not splashed across this in any way. But again, if you look at the fine print, it says manufactured by Columbia House, a division of CBS Records of Canada. So really physically, looking at the small print is the only way to tell a Columbia House pressing from a regular pressing. Many people claim record club vinyl pressings are inferior and don't sound good. I think the fairest thing to say is that the quality was variable. I've generally had had good luck with Columbia House pressings. To my ears anyway, they really don't sound different. The ones that people tended to have issue with were the BMG Record Club pressings. Music clubs did cut corners though. Many times customers wouldn't get the same fancy printed inners or bonus inserts like posters that came with their regular retail versions of records. But hey, when they were selling eight records for a penny, you couldn't really complain, could you? All right, there is my overview of the history of the Columbia House Music Club. What is your history with Columbia House? Were you a member? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you dug today's episode, I'd appreciate a quick thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for? I post a new video every Sunday and many, many Fridays. Dear 33 I hope you have a great week. Until next time, keep on spinning.